What's up, everybody? This November, one of the days is going to be World Diabetes Day. This is been our final episode to talk about the disease and how you can handle it. Okay, let's go. Hi everybody, how are you doing? Um, if you're listening to this episode, today we're going to be talking about diabetes and how we handle the disease. Now, uh, if you stumble across, the, uh, across this uh, episode like very randomly, uh, I'd just like to let you know that we've been talking about this uh, disease uh, in the previous past two episodes uh, with Dr. Alex. And I think you should actually, you know, rewind or if you haven't listened to any of them, how dare you? But, you know, listen to the first episode, second episode, and then, you know, come back here. But if you're too lazy, then, uh, you know, it's suit yourself. Like, okay, I'm not going to control whatever you wanted to do but again back on the show really happy to have him again dr alex how are you doing hey i'm great how all are right you? I, I i'm uh, not too bad we are currently in between uh you know going back to the office and working from home so we yeah. are slowly uh getting back to normal and then uh trying to kind of like throw away that fear of like oh my god what if i go out and i get the the, the disease you know the, the, the virus and whatever yeah. not but I think yeah. like, like I've been doing nonstop tasks. That is like, <laughs> that is like the new norm yeah. now. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I remember at one because we we all do shoots, right? So at one point mm. of time, I had my nose basically poked into like uh, at least once or twice every week, and now we are spitting into little like you know dockets every exactly. almost every three exactly. days. But I mean, yeah. other than that, I mean, all is good. Um, so, Doctor Alex here, uh, you know, just for the for the benefit of our listeners over here, he actually uh, is a doctor that handles diabetic patients. He he gives them advice. You know, he handles their diabetes for them. Now, for the past two episodes, we ha- we've been having a very in depth conversation about the the types of diabetes, how you can handle it, mm. how can you prevent it, or if you are a diabetic patient, you know why you should not worry, what are some of the treatments, or what are the, some of the regular health screenings that you actually should go through. And uh, it's as easy as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I'm not going to say what it is oh, because... Remember? Yeah, sure. I remember. I definitely remember. Um, if you want to uh, you know, know what this whole alphabet uh, checklist is, you listen to episode number two. But you know, today, I know World Diabetes Day is actually coming really, really soon. It's obviously to spread awareness about diabetes. Mm. Now, uh, the first thing uh, I'd like to ask you again, like, there are two types of diabetes. I know we've mentioned about this before, but, you know, can you again refresh all of our memories uh, with regards to the types of diabetes? There's type 2 diabetes and the other one is? Uh, Type 1 and there's also pregnancy diabetes, what we call gestational diabetes. But the most common, Ginny, uh, Gin, is Actually, type 2 is like 95, 99% of people with diabetes have type 2. Um, and that's usually the kind that you get as you get older in life. And yep. There is a genetic component uh, to it. Uh, uh, if one or more of your, uh, one or two of your parents have it, then you have a higher risk of getting it. And then in terms of obesity and weight gain, unhealthy lifestyles, uh, yeah, that can lead to type 2. Type 1 is uncommon. You tend to get it as a kid. And mm-hmm. basically, yeah, you need to go into insulin straight away. You know, I've seen type 1s who are diagnosed age of uh, 4 years old, 5 years old, 9 years old, 14 years old. Yeah, and they need insulin straight away. Then there's also pregnancy diabetes, gestational mm-hmm. diabetes. I believe your mom yeah. uh, had that gene. Yeah, and then she, but she she continued to have diabetes after after uh, the pregnancy, right? So yeah, yeah there's, there's that pregnancy or what we call gestational diabetes as well. And then there are other some... Rarer forms of diabetes, uh, you know, monogenic diabetes, etc., MODI, but that's that's for people like me to know. Okay, now yeah. I I just want to ask you about the pregnancy diabetes because you know mentioned you mentioned that it's called gest gestational uh, diabetes. What do you mean yeah, by that? Yeah, just it's the name is what it says on the tin. You know, gestational mm-hmm. is just a fancy doctor way of saying pregnant. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then is yeah, it, so is it's it, like. Do they yeah. get uh, diabetes when they're pregnant? Is it, is it because of the hormones or is it because of yeah. what they consume, what they eat, their lifestyle, the fact that you know they not are not as active as they were as compared to when they were uh, not pregnant? 
No, it's it's this creature that's living inside your womb for nine months, right? Mm -hmm. No, what happens? What happens? Uh, honestly, is that the interface between baby and mum is yep. this thing called the placenta, and yep. then the placenta shoots out all these hormones and shoots out all these uh, messages that prevents the mum from absorbing or using up her own sugar and right. tries to divert it towards itself. So it's like. You know, Jin, you and I were perfect parasites for nine months, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we really sucked from our host. <laughs> um, yeah, but sometimes that doesn't work in a, in a, in a sort of uh, very balanced and perfect way. So what happens is for the woman, right, she uh, has more sugar in her bloodstream. It's supposed to be all sucked up by the baby, but sometimes the baby doesn't eat it all up. Right. And so the extra sugar is there. It's, it can't enter into the cells because of some of the hormones that mm. are being produced by the placenta. Uh, so therefore, the sugar will be high. Um, and we still have to treat it because it's it's been shown that if the sugar is high, then you will end up having more pregnancy complications, right. you know, birth defects, and even uh, giving birth to, to babies with diabetes is more difficult. After they come out from the womb, then sometimes they, they can have an um, opposite thing where their sugar is low, etc. So yeah, it's something that we have to treat as well. The, oh, okay. This is actually very interesting because you know, we, we didn't really get very in-depth into it. So no. is there any way for a pregnant lady who maybe just found out she's pregnant and you know, now, if she's listening to this podcast, she'll probably think like, oh, okay, uh, maybe I should take precaution. You know what I mean? Is yeah. there any precaution that they, uh, a pregnant lady could take in order for them to not be able to be, uh, you know, diagnosed with diabetes? Yeah, so I think, you see, the thing about this is that um, every pregnancy is different. Yeah. So like um, for, for even my own children, my first and third, um, um, my wife, the first and third pregnancy, yep. uh, she kena. Okay. But the second one, there wasn't. Okay, so same woman, but three different babies, three different uh, sort of outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the first thing is to go and see your uh, gynecologist, your yep. obstetrician, and sort of if you have risk factors which I identified, that means you previously had it before, or you have parents or a sister or an older sister with diabetes mm -hmm. or pregnancy diabetes, then you can go and do the sugar drink test, what we call an oral glucose tolerance test to sort of diagnose whether how your body adapts to high sugar levels. Right. See whether you have this uh, gestational diabetes uh, okay. or not. La. So that's the, the first thing um, is to, to know, la, you know. In terms of what to do, I mean, obviously eating healthily is always going to be a, uh, you know, like, like a, one, yeah, you have to, right? no choice. Yeah. yeah, especially if you're pregnant, right? You don't want to be eating like all these like, you know, nonsense things that might might not be good. You don't want to be drinking alcohol and yeah. being unhealthy to your body, right? You're carrying a baby. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that and then making sure you still remain active. Um, I think one of the misconceptions sometimes is for women, they sort of say, oh, I'm eating for two. Oh. And then they're like, oh, go to town, man. Yeah, like they super gasa, you know, three plates of chicken rice and two char kway teow and one nasi lemak in one sitting. Okay. You know, so so it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you don't you don't necessarily need to sort of eat until like crazy and you gain too much weight during pregnancy. That's one of the risk factors. Right. I mean, other risk factors is the placenta itself um, and your background. Uh, your background... Um, what your family uh, history of diabetes is like, right? Uh, whether you previously had diabetes in another pregnancy, mm -hmm. you know, if so, you're overweight to begin with, um, then also it's a kind of like, um, yeah, risk factor, yeah. Right. So, so when you say gestat uh, gestational diabetes, right? And then, yep. I mean, you you very you casually mentioned about your wife uh, on your first kid and your third kid. Yep. I'm yep. just kind of curious why you mentioned first and third. Is it is it not permanent or you know is it like reversible if you take good care yep. of it? Yeah, so what happens is, um, in your mom's case, yep. she's one of those where it continued on. I so see. So there's three three possible outcomes from a pregnancy diabetes. Okay. The first is like with, with your mom, um, it carries on, the diabetes yeah. carries on. Yeah, but my, okay. mom, my mom tells me that, you know, I don't think... I don't think my mom, I, okay, trust me, if I go to my mom right now and say that, oh, did you get gestational diabetes? She's like, how was that? <laughs> she, pregnancy, say pregnancy diabetes. Yeah, yeah and, uh, you know, uh, pregnant, she yeah. probably, I mean, like, uh, she told me that when she was pregnant, she had a lot of cravings for, like, uh, sweet stuff. Uh, what's the, sorry, she called it a rated water, but soda, la, you know, Coca Cola. Ah, okay, okay. She would love yeah. to drink, like, two cans, three cans, Ooh. and stuff like that. So it's cravings that she had to kind of, like, 
you know, uh, attend to la. So mm. she, although she didn't like eat a lot of food or put out super a lot of weight, but I think her craving was a lot of sweet stuff. So I guess that was one of the contributing factors. Uh, to her being diagnosed with diabetes. But then again, you know, my mom gave birth to me so long ago where technology back then versus what it is now is mm. completely different. So, different, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then again, yes, go, go on. You were saying that uh, some, like my mom, uh, after she had me, she, you know, it stayed on. And with other, some pregnant women, it actually goes away. Yeah. Yeah, so some of them, it's very clear. Once you deliver the placenta or once baby comes out, yep. you know, uh, the, the sugar just drops back to normal. Right. Um, and then the, the, the third outcome is kind of, it drops back to normal, but mm -hmm. it can actually come back again later on in life with permanent diabetes. Like you give birth when you're 25, right? okay? But then you can have the real diabetes, the, like the permanent diabetes, type 2 diabetes when you're 40 years old, 45 right. years old. So okay. those, those are, that's what I'm, I'm kind of um, talking about. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, it's, it's really good to know about pregnancy because mm. uh, mm. I don't think we really dwelled into that. So it's good no, for... No, I think you bring out a great point. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. good for uh, pregnant ladies to kind of be aware. So at least, you know, mm. you're, you're, you're aware of what's happening because, you know, sometimes uh, like... You know, when people, like, if someone is not aware and then they're pregnant and suddenly the doctor says, oh, you've got, diabet uh, like, gestational diabetes, right? You know, I'm just afraid that some of them will just go back, oh, no, I'm now diabetic. I'm now, di like, you know, they will go back thinking that, oh, no, it's not reversible and stuff like that. So it's good to know. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so, like, some diabetics, uh, diabetes is, uh, that is reversible. I think you call that remission when we talked about that sure. in our first episode. I'd like to dwell more into that. Yep. Some of it is permanent. Some of them uh, can be reversible. Where's the fine line to making that happen? Okay, it's actually pretty hard work and I'm going to sort of do a bit of self-promo. You can go and look for uh, me on Facebook, A Dr. Alex Tan. Mm -hmm. And I did a whole episode recently. It, it came out on Tuesday on um, putting diabetes into remission. Right. So in that show, basically, I made four points. I, I think the first thing is that we call it remission because it goes away, yeah. but guess what? Gin, it can come back. Yes, okay. Okay, so it's like, yeah, it goes away and you can't sort of say, hey, great, I'm cured. I'm gonna go eat pizza and hot dogs now, right? Because, uh, hello, it can actually come back if you do that. Okay. So, so that remission is something that you really, really have to um, um, work for, okay? Um, Number two is that uh, there's actually a criteria that you need to fulfill. So what happens is that you need to have normal blood sugars. Yes. Okay. And not be on medicine for at least three months and above. Okay. okay? So then, then you call it uh, uh, remission. Mm -hmm. Then the third thing is basically you have to lose weight. You have to lose large amounts of weight. You're talking about yes. not like two kilos, three kilos. You have to lose like 20, 30, 40 kilos. Okay. And that's usually is only achievable with things like um, surgery. Okay. Or in fact, a newer sort of uh, type of medication which we have called uh, uh, glucagon-like peptide agonist, GLP-1 mm -hmm. uh, agonist. Okay. Okay. Uh, these these are new medicines, and they are able to induce that kind of weight loss. Um, so so yeah, you can you can bring about remission through those, but you need that that sort of high amount of weight loss. And then point number four that I made on that show was that don't 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 kena con, because mm -hmm. the problem is I have seen so many people go and get like oh you know you eat this seed and you go and buy my book okay and you follow this program or you listen to 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 this or you go and um buy that and you can stop your diabetes medicines because it'll be reversed and ah. then you know two weeks later they end up in the ward saying oh it didn't work yeah you know I so don't connect con if if something is too good to be true you know, if you've seen it in mainstream, if you've seen it in CNN, for yeah. example, yeah. or you've seen it in Ginny Boy TV. <laughs> 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 if you've seen it in mainstream, then it's it's there. La. But okay. if you if you have to sort of like say, oh, this is a well-guarded secret that your doctor ain't going to tell you. Uh, like we we yeah. don't want to guard secrets. We want you to be healthy. Honestly, we're yeah. not out to 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 trick you. We are, we're out with your best interest at heart. Yeah. If there's a way to do it, like just by swallowing some, you know, magical herbs or something, we would tell you. But but yeah, don't gonna con. La. There's a lot of stuff out there that claims to reverse diabetes that doesn't actually work yeah um, but the mainstream stuff yes but it's hard work and you have to realize that it doesn't mean that it goes away forever yeah. it's not like oh okay take this antibiotic for one week then you should be cured and it'll never come back no actually it, it can still come back so yeah 
Yeah, I, 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 I guess, you know, when people, when people are being told something, oh, you know, you can get rid of diabetes easily, they always mm. tend to fall for that, not fall for that, but believe that because got hope. it's that hope of like, yeah. oh, you know what I mean? Something yeah. that doesn't require uh, too much complications in order to solve. Mm. So, you know, like, mm. you know, if you're mm. asking a person to, uh, if, if you tell a person, okay, look, you need to lose 30 kilos uh, in order for you to go into, uh, you know, a chance to basically control your diabetes. Mm. And then somebody comes away, hey, you know what? You just take this pill. And you will you will cure your diabetes. The guy will be like, "Oh, is it? You know what I mean? Mm. It's, ah, I mean, it's human nature, but uh, it's yeah. good to know to emphasize that that I believe well, uh, what we're trying to summarize over here is trust science because yeah. there are scientists and doctors around the world who've been studying diabetes for as long for as long it time. for yeah. as long as yeah. it has been discovered. So I'm not sure Absolutely. why doctors would want to uh, you know uh, yeah. no. have we you like you know if, if 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 a doctor comes up with a cure. I mean, amazing. You know, you know how, okay, you know, you know, there are some movies, right, where they say that, oh my goodness, if we find a cure for this disease, it's going to affect the industry by billions and billions of dollars and hospitals will not make money. You know, these type of movies, conspiracy mm. theories. But yeah, yeah. I, I just feel that uh, at the end of the day, uh, like my mom too, like, I'm not going to lie that my mom has had other people it's always friends who will forward a message. Hey, you know what? Uh, and these are friends with a common uh, a common problem or a common interest. Like her friends also is going through diabetes and then they're like, oh, hey, you know what? Uh, you eat this, uh, can bring your, can control your, your, your sugar level. And yeah. you tend to always trust your friends a lot more mm. than a commercial, than something you see on TV. Your, you will trust your friend rather than Probably the health minister who is making a general announcement on TV. You know what I mean. So, is yeah, this type of true. is this type of uh, mindset like, that we need to help change and educate? Yeah, absolutely. It's. I mean, I I don't blame people for wanting hope. Yeah. The the nature of, of us as doctors is that we we try to be very responsible in what we say. That's why. We, when we say remission, it means remission. It can go away, but it can come back. And we don't say cure. We want to be very careful with the words um, um, that we use. Lah, okay. You know? So whatever, whatever, you know, remission means that your glucose normal, uh, your sugar levels are normalized already. Right. But the things that made it abnormal in the first place probably are still inside of you. You have to okay. think about it like that. It's just that the, it's not you know, you have it under control. It's not coming and letting the sugar be high. Okay. You know, your genes are still there. Your your risk having, you know, parents with diabetes is still there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, your your overall ethnic background, etc. is still there. Lor. I, so yeah, remission, it's not easy to achieve. It's not easy to keep in remission. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess to me, the good news is, you know, rather than think of, hey, how am I going to go into remission? Yeah. Imagine if the only cure for diabetes is you must lose 40 kilos. Mm -hmm. Like how many people with diabetes in the world will be able to achieve that? Yeah. And then somebody, uh, some scientist comes along, some medical doctor comes along and says, hey, I have a tablet oh. that although it does not put you into remission, it at least controls the levels. Right. Then that would be revolutionary, you know? So yeah. um, you have to put it into perspective, lah, you know? Now, um, so again, just to bring this up again, my mom uh, has been yeah. basically injecting insulin uh, every day. I think mm. normally she would inject insulin before every meal. Sure. So obviously when she first started, it was a little bit uh, a bit weird because, you know, you got to inject yourself. But then, you know, mm. it became a part of her lifestyle. Now, I think mm. you mentioned uh, about the different types of uh, injections or, or, or one can actually get or treatment that one can get uh, where they receive uh, an injection either daily or weekly, could you care to kind of elaborate a little bit about that? Oh yeah, yeah. So there, there are advances in that field, and the weekly injection is not actually insulin. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually what I mentioned just now. Uh, this GLP one receptor agonist. Right. So what happens is GLP one recept uh, GLP one glucagon like peptide, big mouthful, big name. Yeah. Is actually a hormone which is released from inside of us. Okay. Right? All of us have GLP-1 inside of us. It's released every time we eat. Okay? And then GLP-1 goes and acts on your pancreas. Your pancreas is this uh, another organ that helps to produce insulin. Okay? Um, and what is special about it is that GLP-1 also has a side effect of weight loss. I see. And pretty good weight loss. Right? So what happens when you normally eat? You eat, this GLP-1 comes out and he does two things. He makes you reduce your appetite. I see. Okay. 
uh, number one. And then number two, he makes your pancreas make insulin. And then insulin, your own insulin from your own pancreas helps to lower the sugar. Okay. The insulin, which is made by your own pancreas, has got a auto shut off. Okay. So what, what happens is like the insulin that your mom uses, yep. she selects the dose. Like she has to sort of say, okay, I'm going to eat one bowl of rice. So therefore, uh, the dose of insulin is X. Yep. I'm going to eat um, one bowl of rice and one plate of, I don't know, chak kway tiao. Yep. So therefore, it's 2X I right? see. or I see. X plus Y. Okay. Um, but whereas if you use your own, own insulin, the good thing about it is your own insulin knows when to stop. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's automatic, so you can't over insulin yourself. You can't uh, end up with a higher dose than you need, and then have a low blood sugar instead, lah. I right? see. And it's always the part you you need X amount of insulin, it will give X amount of insulin. You need one point five X insulin, it will give one point five. So that's that's a great system to sort of utilize. Mm-hmm. The problem with our own GLP one that comes out from our own bodies, right? It don't last too long. I see. It's broken down really fast. It's broken down within minutes. So what, one, what they did when they discovered this is that they said, hey, uh, why don't we inject it so that it can last really long, so that people can feel full really long. Okay. And in the end, they, they started out by saying, oh, okay, it can last for half a day, so you have to inject twice a day. Then they said, oh, now we have a better version. Uh, we have version 2.0, which you just inject once a day, this GLP-1. And then now they have this weekly version, this weekly version, which is like, yeah, um, you inject it once a week. You okay. just select which is your special day. You like Sunday every Sunday, or you like Saturday every Saturday. Okay. So it's it's pretty good um, in that sense. Um, there are even these experimental versions where they try and implant it into you for six months. Oh. Right? Yeah. So it's like, imp- sorry, implant, does it mean by they kind of have like a machine that automatically uh, injects it? Or yeah, do, they implant it, do they implant it inside your body? They, they implant it under your skin. Oh. So you have to do a small surgery. Okay. And then they implant a mini, 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 mini pump. I've seen it. It's it's like, um, how would I say? It's like a mini piston. Okay. It's only about like this size. Okay. Right? And then it's just like a matchstick. They implant a mini matchstick into you. This mini matchstick actually has got a mechanism which slowly, slowly, slowly press the, the, the filler out over okay. six months. Can you imagine? It's moving over a period of six months. So how do you refill like it? <laughs> so what you have to do six months later, you have to do another mini surgery to oh. take it out and put a new one. Oh, wow. But it's, I, it's not that popular. It basically, like if you if you didn't like it, you have to go and do a mini surgery. Okay. You know, and okay. then you have to go and, you know, do the mini surgery every six months. So mm-hmm. kind of like the one week is, is seems to be um, more way to go. convenient mm. and... Mm. Mentally acceptable. <laughs> Mentally acceptable, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just j- watch this space as well. I mean, um, um, this this peptide, this GLP-1, yep. right? glucagon-like peptide, this GLP-1, there's also an upcoming tablet version of it. Oh. But the tablet version of it is is really much weaker because the problem yes. with peptides, they are proteins, when you makan it, right? Yes. Your body automatically digests it. Got it. Uh, so they have to come up with all this newer technology to coat it and coat it and coat it and coat it and coat the tablet in in lots of protective layers so that when you it manages to make it to a point where you know the body has digested the coat and then the the final pure product comes out. So that that doesn't seem to be that um, as effective right. than the injected version. Um, but you know it's you know science is working in all these directions. Lah. Yeah, I mean. It's good to hear because, like, you know, when you mentioned about that scientist or professor who said we're going to get a cure in 1983, mm. at least we're getting advances. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> when yeah, you just yeah. told me about that microsurgery, I was like, what? It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's, wow, very interesting. Okay. Very quick question, though. Like, can my mom do this? Or, you know, what, what are the requirements? What are the prerequisites? You know, is it, is it your age? Your, what condition no, are so you allowed? There's no prerequisites. You need to bring her to see her diabetes doctor. Right. Um, it kind of uh, may not be able, so you need to have a reasonably fit body and you need to have your own pancreas um, uh, um, sort of working. Okay. So if your mom's pancreas, because of her age or you know other illnesses, etc., yeah. doesn't make its own insulin already, then mm-hmm. there's no point giving this. Okay. Right? okay. Because you, you need your own insulin to come out and then have this automatic action. Got it. Okay. Number but one. but there will be there will be tests. Like say, if I bring my mom, there will be tests for you to kind of determine that whether she's eligible for this uh, treatment. 
Yeah, they, they are. Okay. They are. Um, they are a little bit on the expensive side. They are a bit on the research side. Okay. Because sometimes to be very practical, what we do is for if someone, you know, like like your mom came, is we test lah. Okay. You know, rather rather than run some, uh, you know, uh, uh, blood tests and scans and things like that, sometimes it's just faster to say, okay, auntie, you go home once a week, you try this. If your sugar come down, it works, right? Mm -hmm. No need to go and do anything fancy. The other thing is you have to be able to tahan. Uh, we didn't mention this, but uh, you have to be able to tahan some of the side effects. Right. Because what happens is that it goes to your, your brain and it, it reduces your appetite, right? Okay. But you know, what we found out is that um, appetite regulation can be overrided by social context, by human behavior. Okay. So what we have different types of eating. We have sort of like... Um, what we call homeostatic eating. So eating because I'm hungry, eating because myself as an organism, I need energy to work, to be to remain alive. Then there's another kind of eating which is called hedonistic eating. That means pleasurable eating. I ah. eat because I want to make friends. <laughs> right? I eat because I want to taste. Not because I need energy anymore. Yeah. Right. And so, this is the primary type of eating. So sometimes, okay. right, even though there is no appetite there is no need for you to eat as a creature yeah right you still makan why because your friends are not to say even pressuring you you just want to make friends yeah you know you eat because it's a social context oh it's chinese new year therefore i must eat it's like your coping right? it's like your coping mechanism <laughs> yeah if you eat even though you don't have appetite even though this this molecule has has gone to your appetite center and said hey look you know um take a break no appetite Sometimes we eat even though we don't feel hungry. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, sometimes you can actually get a side effect of feeling nauseous and vomiting. Right. So you're, you're, So we got to test um, patients, even you know, if your mom wants to try this, you have to test it to sort of see that, hey, do you have side effects or not? And we usually sort of give a baby dose first. Hey, you know, auntie, you take this for a while, the baby dose, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. You feel okay, then we might move it on. Right. Um, yeah, so so there are these um, sort of stomach type side effects that that sometimes you, not all people will face, about one in four will face, but um, it's usually temporary. Lah. Okay. And, and you usually get over it by doing baby dose first, then slowly, slowly increase the dose. Lah. But but yeah, if, if your mom wants to try, it's something that she can try. Okay. Um, I guess the other thing is to make sure all her other organs are still okay. Lah. Her yeah. liver, whether her liver, her kidney, all those can take it. But I see. yeah, it's, it's, you have to go and, go and see a diabetes doctor. Interesting. All right. Very interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, here's another question. I mean, like one more, you know, before we wrap this up. Now, insulin. Now, uh, yep. some people are okay with it. Some people are not. Um, what are some of the misconceptions of insulin? Now, if, if, you're, if you're listening and you're wondering what is insulin, it's literally you uh, it, it, like taking an injection, injecting yourself uh, to produce insulin, insulin shots, right? Yep. So what, what, what are some of the misconceptions and why do people do not want to take this uh, form of treatment? Yeah, I mean, I guess, first of all, it's an injection. Yeah. So I guess everybody, when they say the word injection, they have this great big picture of a big needle, you know, um, and then you have to do it sort of uh, every day. The truth of it is actually all of us recently would have had COVID jabs, right? Yes. The jab for insulin is like 100 times, 2,000 times, 100,000 times thinner and shorter. Oh, yeah. Right? So the needle is really, you can't feel it. I have jabbed myself multiple times to prove it to patients. You know, right. I've shown myself, uh, I jab in front of my patients and show them, hey, look, you know, it, did I pass out? <laughs> you know, am I screaming in pain, auntie? Right? right. So that's 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 what I do. I mean, I'm sure you've seen your mom do it as well. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's one thing. I guess the other thing is also home yeah. afana. You know, like very very troublesome. I have to do it before meals, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, they might feel shame attached to it, which is something that I I always try to be an advocate to sort of say that look, you know, if you know people who have diabetes, you know, don't don't make it more difficult for them. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't like look at somebody who is on crutches and only has one leg, right? Mm -hmm. An amputated guy, and you wouldn't laugh at him. Yeah. And you wouldn't go up to him and sort of say, hey, uncle, why only one leg? Yeah, right? yeah. You wouldn't treat people like that. Yeah. And so you see people with, who, who have diabetes, don't go and make a big fanfare and fuss about it. If they're injecting insulin, let them inject, you yeah. know? Okay. So I, I, I feel that, you know, um, things can be done in, in that in that space to sort of say that, look, you know, you see people checking their sugar and all that. Don't go and make a big 
this one out of it lah, you know. Right. If you're curious, you they find a polite way, find a nice way, be sensitive towards people. Mm -hmm. Um, so that yeah, injecting can be done a bit more openly. Um, and I I don't get patients coming back to me saying that I I need to go and find a toilet, dirty uh, toilet to go and do it, etc. Yeah. So yeah. I I mean um, I I've lived yeah. with my mom injecting herself for a long time. I don't. Mm. It's not obstructive at all. Sometimes I don't even. Okay. So, sometimes good. I have to ask my mom, "Have you injected your insulin?" She's like, "Yeah." Hey, yeah. <laughs> Good it's son, like, very household. Like, it's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, you think what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Now, okay. Uh, here's one question that I think I should ask, uh, just to be, j just to be a little bit more aware. Now, when someone gets diabetes, uh, diabetes, they always think like, "Never mind, I got medication. That's all." You know what I mean? Like, I can, I can rely on medication, and I, some part of me thinks that that's not true because you know how mm. people sometimes when they are injured, okay, don't worry. Uh, you know, if I cut myself, there's a plaster and there's antibiotics, it'll heal. So should people have that mindset? Ah, it's okay lah. I have diabetes. Uh, you know, I have medication to control my sugar. I can eat whatever I want. No lah. I mean, your 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 instinct is absolutely correct. You know, it's it's like, um, I I I have I actually have patients who sort of behave like that despite what oh. I advise lah. So you know, it is. It is. I mean, it does happen. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have a guy who I I literally tell him I'm like the ghost chasing after Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's eating here, and then I'm like the ghost coming, increasing the dose of your medicine each time, and and that's the problem, you see. I mean, this guy says, "Ah, yeah, the medicine paid for by my company. I don't care, lah. You know, you do what you want with the medicine. You just let me eat what I want to eat." And he's he's kind of like a banana leaf three times a day kind of guy, right? Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, he can do that. He's oh. a he's a yeah. And so, so you know, a bakute for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I have banana leaf three times a day, oh, wow. uh, etc. And nasi lemak in between. And he says, "You got you 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 are not allowed into this space of my life. I want to be what how I want. I want to be. You just do the medicine part, okay, doc? I I don't like that. I don't like treating people like that because you know, at the end of the day, diabetes is one kind of uh, disease where you see me for what fifteen minutes, thirty yeah. minutes. Yep. Then you go home for for the the rest of the month, the rest of three months. Okay. You know, and it's all in your hands. You know, so um, if you actually control your diet, okay, and if you actually lose weight, you can go into remission. Number one, number yes. two, you go into less medications. Yeah. And the less medications you have, the more money you save. You yeah. know, the That's the true. less chances that you might have side effects, etc. Yeah. So I am a big time advocate to sort of say that no, 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 no. It's not about the medicine. The ninety nine percent is you. Yeah. And the one percent is me as your doctor trying to guide you and prescribe the correct stuff. That's true. Right. So yeah, there there are some diseases where where it's really down to the skill of the doctor. You know, you got breast cancer. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure you get a super good surgeon to cut it out. Yes. Yeah. But diabetes is the exact opposite. You know, it's up to down up to you. You know. Exactly. I I yeah I I totally agree on that and uh, it's it's just good to put it out there because a lot of people tend to always. I, you know, I just want an easy way out. I, I, I feel that, uh, uh, and, and, you know, uh, there are a lot of ways to prevent uh, getting diabetes, all right? And there's all, a lot of ways for you to control your diabetes. We've spoken about this in our previous two episodes. I would like to encourage yep. everybody to basically revisit those episodes, share with your friends, your families. Uh, if there's anyone who's going through diabetes, you can send it to them as well. Uh, I mean, w w well, I mean, the, the purpose of these three episodes is to basically educate. And, and, I'm, and to be honest, yeah. Dr. Alex, I, uh, coming from someone who... Doesn't really talk much about diabetes. I've enjoyed these three uh, episodes. Oh, I'm glad you have. Yeah, yeah really. I've enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed this as well. Yeah, yeah really understanding about it, uh, understanding it, uh, understanding more about it. Uh, I mean, for me, it's all. all it's always because, you know, my mom is diabetic and it's mm. always in the mm. best interest of my mom. Who knows? I'll be knocking on your door the next time and my mom will be visiting oh. you as well. <laughs> and, um, and of course, uh, if you know you want to find out more information, uh, please visit the other episodes. You should do your regular checkups. You should basically... Uh, uh, you know, follow the alphabets that we mentioned in episode two. And the most important yeah. thing is, you know, there is this campaign going on called the Ops Kurang Manis. Lower your sugar intake. I mean, like, you know, I mean, yeah, if you got you got a sweet tooth, if, I don't think that should be an excuse, lah, huh? You know, people should say, oh, yeah, I got sweet tooth, lah. I kind of feel, I kind of feel like, okay, me, lah, growing older already, lah, I tend to want to know more about what I consume. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because of the risk of getting diabetes, because my mom is diabetic. And mm. like that's why, uh, like for me, it's always like that, lah. Huh? It always has to give you that little scare, and then you have gotta go out, and then you you do, uh, you do whatever you can in order to lead a healthy lifestyle. And when you are on the trend of getting to a, a healthy lifestyle, you tend to know want to know more 
uh, of what you can do to maintain uh, that healthy lifestyle with less effort. And uh, I think, to be honest, 98-99% comes with your self-discipline and diet as well. Dr. Alex, um, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you uh, for the past three episodes. This is the third episode and final episode. But before we go, we know, would you like to say anything to all of our listeners? Um, yeah, so um, by the time this comes out, it's supposed to be World Diabetes Day. Yep. So um, if you have diabetes, okay, please take care of yourself. Uh, watch our three episodes and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully you can learn a few things. If you don't have diabetes, but you may be at risk, again, watch the three episodes to find out whether you should be going to testing. And then finally, um, if you are not at risk, etc., all those things, but you do know somebody with diabetes, find out in a way how you can support them, you know. Yeah. Don't don't assume that you know how to say, hey, you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Find out more from them. Every person with diabetes is different. Yeah. Um, they're on different types of medications, they have different body sizes, they come from different cultural backgrounds, etc. Find out how you can actually support them uh, 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 more. And I think as a society, we, we have to work together la, you know, to, to sort of uh, support people with diabetes and to help prevent the diabetes because the numbers, you know, if you pay attention to episode one, the numbers are just like skyrocketing yeah. uh, diabetes all across Malaysia. Yeah, so and remember, hashtag ops. Kurang Kurang manis, manis. Yeah. This doesn't just go on on Diabetes Day, okay? It goes on forever. I tell, does, tell your yeah. friends to take care of their diet. Uh, of course, hey, go pick up a sport, man. Go jogging. I just picked up cycling. Did my cycling. first uh, did my first 36 kilometers today and I almost died, but, <laughs> but it, it feels <laughs> you don't good. Look it. Actually, you look really, uh, you know, bright and, and energetic. It's the makeup. <laughs> it's the makeup. Hola. <laughs> Dr. Alex, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. Stream all of our three episodes. We'll speak to you guys next time. Thanks, Gene.